Little Archie already has a lot of things, a double-barreled surname, a Kashmir beanie and global adoration. What he, surprisingly, does not have is a flashy title. Instead the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have decided against letting their son be titled the Earl of Dumbarton, rather he will be known by the more democratic master. Their reasoning is simple, they want the lad to have as normal a life as possible, unencumbered by a future of plague unveilings, horse shows and endless Commonwealth cocktail parties. Also, perhaps more importantly, they want to keep him as far away from the glare of the intrusive, insatiable press as they can short of forcing him to grow up on an isolated Pacific at all with no Wi-Fi. To understand this formidable commitment to sequestering Archie away from the media hordes, you don't need to look much further than the way Diana, Charles and even their grandparents have subjected the Wales brothers to the press since infancy. In the 1980s, there were regular, highly adorable photo calls that captured Wills and Harry as chubby, angelic toddlers and small children. Look back at footage of Wills, aged only 18 months, taking wobbly steps towards the wall of cameramen in 1983 both very sweet and quite sad, he was having to get used to the omnipresence of the fourth estate before he could even speak. You can watch it all here. By the time the early 1990s rolled around the Wales marriage was in tatters and both Diana and Charles regularly deployed their children to help shape public perception and to garner positive media coverage. For example, in 1994, Diana took William and Harry to British amusement park Alton Towers, it just so happened that photographers were there to capture the princess cheerfully getting soaked on a long ride and having a very jolly day out with her boys. The message was clear, she was the authentic, warm parent to Charles' stilted, fuddy-duddy dad. But Charles could do the same. During skiing trips to Switzerland, Prince Charles and his sons spent time standing around in the snow and posing for frostbitten Fleet Street photographers. The summer months at Balmoral required that the Wales boys stand next to a kilted Prince Charles or the Duke of Rothsay as he is known in Scotland while the media dutifully captured the familial tableau. Perhaps the saddest way that Harry and Wills were forced to live their lives in the full glare of the public eye was during Diana's funeral. Public sentiment had turned against the Queen and the Windsor clan for their apparent coldness in the face of an outpouring of national grief and brought the monarchy perilously close to the edge. In this context, having William and Harry, then aged just 15 and 12, take part in the agonizing, heartbreaking walk behind their mother's funeral cortege seems like a calculated means of co-opting the public goodwill towards the boys for the royal family's own benefit. It was something Harry himself railed against in a 2017 interview with Newsweek. My mother had just died, and I had to walk a long way behind her coffin, surrounded by thousands of people watching me while millions more did on television, he said. I don't think any child should be asked to do that, under any circumstances. I don't think it would happen today. Given all of this, it makes perfect sense Harry wants to protect his child from ever being used as a pawn as some part of palace skullduggery. By making him plain old master Archie, the Sussexes are putting pay to any future possibilities of him being regularly exploited for the royal family's PR benefit. So master Archie, enjoy the peace. You will be able to toddle around your garden without ever having the BBC present, you lucky little sausage. Your parents have made a very wise choice.